Hi, my name is Justice Costins, and today I want to share with you the truth about the dark side of Halloween. When we look at Halloween, we got to look at Halloween from a biblical perspective, and we need to see what is happening in Halloween and what the Bible says about those practices. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 from verse 9 to 14, the Bible tells us that when you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. This says that the nations that were there in Canaan were doing detestable things, things that the God did not approve of. Verse 10 goes on to say, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son and daughter to fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or a spiritist who consults the dead. Even here in the 21st century, we find that there are people that are still sacrificing to gods made out of wood or stone, gold, silver or precious stones. God says you're not allowed to do that. We even find that there are still people that are involved in divination and sorcery. We people are now even still doing a witchcraft. People are cast spells. We look at uh, witch doctors and some gomas in Africa. We look at people that are around with the caravans and they are calling up spirits of the dead. We look at people that are contacting the forefathers or their ancestors. And they said that this is a total, completely above board thing to do. What does the Bible go on to say about that? In verse 12, it says, anyone. That says, anyone anywhere in the world who does these things is the detestable to the Lord and because of these detestable practices the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you you must be blameless before the Lord your God the nations you will dispossess listen to those who practice sorcery or divination but as for you the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. Now here God is withholding permission to people that do things what is happening in Halloween. And we're going to look just in brief at some of those practices that they do. God says that I will dispossess people who actually do these things. Do you want to be dispossessed? God has not permitted you to do those practices. Now Halloween is just for fun. When you look at the root of it, where it all started, was that you know you would be in your hut and a cold breeze will blow through the place, you'll get the chills around your back and the next moment you hear a door slam. You think, wow, the spirits must be angry, the gods are angry. So now they get afraid. They go and they make sacrifices to the gods, to the spirits, and they light up the night sky with bonfires to ward off the evil. Or you might have lost somebody to death, and now you believe that they are watching over you. And when the house contracts at night and you hear the cracking of the roof or the floors, you say, oh, that's my beloved father or mother or a friend that is now coming to show that they are caring about me and they're looking after me or there might even be some cats or monkeys playing on the roof and you hear this noise and you say wow it's the demons those are the spirits that are not happy when you look today you look at the movies horror shows the exorcist the ring the twilight zone series, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, X-Files, Dracula, Werewolves, and many other horror movies. It's got one thing in common. It's all geared to frighten you. This is Halloween's real hold. It's all about fear. It was because of fear that the people sought to appease the gods or the spirits. 
from the 31st of October to the 2nd and 3rd November was a time in which the winter started in the north and it was during that time that generally that the ancients believed that the people will rise from the dead and as zombies the undead so to speak that they will come into this world and do all kinds of evil one of the uh, music videos that we uh, remember of years gone by that really expresses it to a great extent was that one of Michael Jackson's called the thriller after all you cannot uh, kill the person that is already dead and it was during this time that people dressed up differently so that the spirits or the undead would not be able to recognize them imagine when we look about fear in Halloween people used to collect things from the neighbors and others so that they would be able to get sweet things or gifts that they could be able to sacrifice to appease the gods or the spirits so that they would not be harmed in any way so those people that did not give they were warned just because they did not give that the spirits or the demons or even the undead would get them and so they preyed upon the fears of superstitious people even at that time we need to remember God and we also can remember the gods in Egypt remember the gods in Egypt had to be uh, satisfied and therefore the Egyptians brought sacrifices to them but then when Moses came in there and he called down the plagues onto those Egyptians God is actually showing through the plagues that his power was greater than the powers of the Egyptian gods. As a matter of fact, when he made gnats, I mean that's a small fly, the Egyptian priests could not even make one. But the bad thing is this, the dangerous thing, the sad thing is this, that people that go and have tried to appease these gods or spirits, are in actual fact saying God we need don't need you we've got a superior source of information the gods that I'm serving is more powerful than what you are God has spoken God's revealed word is Jesus Christ and when we read in the Bible in the book of John chapter 1 in the beginning was the word and word was with God and the word was God then it goes on to say and the word became flesh speaking of Jesus the Christ the Messiah the son of the living God so really we need to know it's not just Halloween that is one day of evil every day is a day of evil because murders are being committed every day people are still stealing on a daily basis women are being raped there's violence corruption all across the world it's not just in one place it's all across the world all these terrible things are happening on a daily basis not just on Halloween but it is what we do with those days which either makes it evil or holy we need to remember the one who has the real power not that despite all the detestable things that the nations did none with all their power could match the power of God if they could have done that the Israelites could not have entered into the land that God had given them if the power of the Druids was that great why is it dying out and even of the other gods we find that people get disillusioned with gods made out of wood or stone or silver or gold or precious metals or stones and constantly they are being drawn to the one and only God the one with the real power we need to look at 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and read it for yourself that needs to become the foundation of our faith it was clearly in the fact that Jesus not only died on the cross 2000 years ago but he rose from the dead after three days death and darkness and Satan could not hold him in a grave and that Jesus power is really revealed 
that he has the power over sin and death come on justice lighten up man you're way too serious we don't really believe this stuff we're just having fun after all look at this boy he's got supposedly blood all over his shirt and over his jacket and his face being white with the blood drained from his body I mean how serious do you think that this is I mean he's just being cool he's just having fun I mean look at this it's just a little boy he doesn't believe stuff like that he is just having fun do you think that this was fun when Jesus hung upon the cross 2000 years ago he paid the price for sins do you think it was just for fun that he was scourged and had the crown of thorns pressed on his head nails through his hands and his feet was it just for fun or was it not just paying the price for sinners so that we would have eternal life because after all he is the resurrection and he is the life were just having fun when you think of the mid 20th century even into the 21st century the United States Ireland England other countries children would dress up and they would parade to the neighbors houses and do a little performance and then ask for a reward trick or treat what is it really all about God said to us not to imitate the practices of the other gods and the people that served other gods as a matter of fact Jesus said let the little children come unto me and hinder them not we are not to go to other peoples other gods or even imitate it I mean we are not playing these are serious things Halloween just fun look at this little girl I mean doesn't she look cute that lovely smile on her face and her hair beautifully made up and that little witch's uniform and little witch's hat and gloves I mean doesn't she look cute she's not really serious about these things but you know what we are in fact doing is we are desensitizing our children against the evils and the evil practices of the worldly system we are desensitizing our children regarding the practices of witches and the satanic rituals we just say they look cute but our children are growing up that this is the way that you can look cool and or look cute but tell me how cute was Christ when he hung upon a cross with that crown of thorns on his head how cute do you think that he looked when he paid the price of sins for those detestable practices that we were guilty of this is not cute we are teaching our children the evil practices and we say to them it is okay Jesus died because it was not okay because Jesus gave his life to break the power of Satan Halloween just for fun just look at this guy how serious can you take him he's not really very serious about this whole thing he was just having fun and really he's only pretending but God said to us not to imitate the practices of the worldly systems you see when we look at Christ when he took the nails into his hands and his feet he didn't do it for fun 
He did it because he loved the world so much. And because of the evil practices of the satanic world that he gave his life so that people like that man, myself and others could be saved. This was not just for fun. Jesus conquered death. Not that we can pretend or imitate the living dead, whatever they would call that. Imitate zombies. No, we could have real eternal life. Fun? We need to know that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. We are not to walk in the ways of the devil. We are not to practice the things that Halloween teaches. What we need to do is, we need to walk in the shadow of the cross. We need to walk circumspectly before God. And as we do that, we will not have to do these detestable things that the world does, that God abhors and hates. If we walk in the shadow of the cross, we will one day be united with Him in heaven. But let me share with you something really scary. Remember earlier on I shared with you on how I can help you become a child of God. First of all, what you need to do is this. You need to acknowledge that you have done detestable things before God. Secondly, you need to confess those sins and ask God's forgiveness for that. And then thirdly, you need to walk in God's ways. If you would like to do that right now, I'm going to invite you to pray after me what we call the sinner's prayer and if you really mean this from your heart God will now forgive you your sins repeat after me dear God I am a sinner Lord I have done detestable things and followed after worldly and satanic things dear God I am sorry for my sins I confess my sins before you and I turn from them right now Lord Jesus I want to thank you 
that you died on a cross for me 2,000 years ago, that you shed your blood as an innocent lamb so that my sins can be washed away. And dear God, you say in your word, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Father God, for forgiving my sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on that cross for me and that I can now know that through your blood my sins have been washed away and I stand cleansed before you. Your word tells me as many received you that you have given the power to be called the sons of God. I receive you now, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior. And I thank you that I can now be called a child of God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, please leave a note below or click like on Facebook or Twitter. Or else you can just email me at justiceatlantic.net. I would like to share more with you. Thank you for watching all this way through. And if you would want to leave a comment, by all means, I would appreciate if you do. Whether you liked it or not, I'd like both comments, please. May God bless you. My name is Justice Costas.